Hello and welcome to Access 2013 tutorials. Uh, this will be hopefully the last in a mini series on invoices, and we're going to be looking at subtotaling the main invoice and uh, calling that from the data sheet. Um, so, if you want to play along, usual stuff, link below the video, download section of the website, Access 2013 DB53. Open it up. And password is password. And let us take a look at the report we made yesterday, which is report invoices. And here it is. Okay, and what I want to do today, if I open it in print preview, it would be a bit more obvious. You've got the invoice, you've got the invoice number, date of booking, guest, and then you've got the uh, data sheet, uh, which is a sub report, which lists the relevant information regarding the given invoice. Um, but what I want to do underneath is drop some fields giving some subtotals and totals and total paid and all kind of stuff like that. So without further ado, go to design view, scroll down and have we got any yes we have that's perfect. Okay, so click on text box, just drop a text box in. I seem to have made that text box disappear. Didn't know that was possible. So press Control Z. Oh no, there it is. All right, there we go. Okay, so obviously normally you've got a label and then you've got a text box, which in this case can be a calculated field. The first one is actually the first text box. I'm actually going to be putting two text boxes down because I want actually the label to be a calculated field as well. So. Let's merge that and let's call it text label, even though it doesn't really matter the names. Okay, so uh, this is going to look like a typical label is actually going to be a calculated field. And we're going to go to data and click on the ellipsis and we're going to say equals subtotal. That means with. Um, probably space and percent. Now, if we go for discount, 0.2 and percent. So there's going to be an obvious problem here, but I just want to show it to you. I've got a report. We can see that this invoice is subtotal with 0.1%. It's not 0.1%, it's 0.1 from 1, which is actually 10%. So we need to format this number to a percent. So it's uh, quite easy to do actually. We'll just house the discount in format percent. There's a bracket over there and we get subtotal with oh okay actually now I've done that. I'll get rid of the percent here and say discount. So it looks like that. Subtotal with 10% discount and then we're going to drop that subtotal in there. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go and look where we're getting the figures from. So we're getting it from a query, which is Query Cost Payments Union. And we're interested in related bookings, but we're not interested in um, payments. Actually, we want sorted, but I don't want this one. Want query Cost Payments Union sorted. There it is. Okay, so we want a booking. We d we want anything where the multiplier is minus one, which means it's charged. One is for payments because we're not totaling payments. Um, and then we actually then need to take the percent discount off of it. So we got uh, a couple of um, uh, calculations to make. So we're summing first of all. Are we summing the amount or are we summing the amount in, uh, adjusted? Right, we're summing the just the straight amount so we're not even taking into v, uh, taking into account VAT at this point. So we're going to click on control source. So when you're doing like a complicated D sum, um, just break it down. So D sum, keep it nice and simple at the start, amount from and it's query costs payments union sorted. So query costs payments union sorted 
and just OK and let's see if that works first of all. OK, so that does work. Um, so now what we need to do is add a criteria. You should have seen me do this a couple of times before. So it's booking ID equals ampersand booking ID. Simple as that. So if that works, 1890, that's brilliant. Now we need where the multiplier equals minus 1. Ampersand and multiplier equals minus 1. So if that one works. Yeah, so we're up to 480. Okay, so now what we need to do is having this figure, which in this case is 480, we need to take the discount off. So if you multiply 480 by the number 1, you get 480. If we have the number 1 and we minus 0 0.1 off of it, it becomes 0 0.9. So if you multiply 480 by 0 0.9, you get 90% of 0 0.9. So uh, times, open and close bracket, 1 minus discount and we get oh, we get a cancel that's a very intelligent thing I did there so times let's try that again <coughs> pardon me 1 minus discount press OK instead of cancel hey we get a 432 it's a brilliant ok so change the format to currency so we can see that the subtotal with 10% discount equals 432 that's great ok so let's move on to the next one Double click there, moich, moich or shout, and let's drop a new one in. And this one's going to be VAT. We can look in there, and VAT equals uh, D lookup because we need to, the VAT is in. Actually, where is the VAT? That's a very good point. Table bookings or di it must nice invoices surely. Yeah, the VAT rates in invoices. Okay, so right, as we were equals D lookup and I think it's just called VAT. I might be wrong. And it, where is it? It's in uh, table invoices, and we need a criteria. We're going to say booking ID FK equals and booking ID that's a super and if we do that and have a look do we get a figure we do isn't it wonderful I go to format and go to format per cent excellent and let's go to range and insert below a couple of times keep it real okay let's drop another text box in there okay so this one is going to be total and what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be looking up the same as this and minus and discount off but instead of looking up um, without VAT we're going to look it up with VAT so we're actually we might as well just borrow this equation control C okay and just it's kind of annoying this layout because it keeps going to the top. And just drop it in there and amount, I think it's ink VAT. See if that picks anything up. Yes, it did. I go to format and make that currency. But also it's minus off the 20% um, discount, I think. One thinks. Does one think this? Well, it's five seven six. No, it's minus off ten percent discount. Yeah, so five one eight forty is five seven six minus fifty seven. Seven twenty five. Well, it's fifty seven sixty. Yeah, so six. Yeah, twenty five. Twenty five plus fifty. Yeah, so that's correct. Okay, cool. And we need to drop another subtotal in. And this one's going to be um, total paid. To go here. Now, uh, again, I would suggest we just 
rob this formula. Not too high, click in there. Drop it in there. Now we're desumming amount. Da, 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 book an ID equals blah blah blah. Multiplier equals one. So that actually means we're now totaling the payments made. Press OK. See what we get. One four one zero. Payment, 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 payment. No, here, yeah, yeah. I don't know. 840 plus 400 is 1240, 13, yes, correct, 1410. Okay, format and currency. And the last thing that's going to leave uh, is the balance. Uh, so let's take this and name it text total. And let's take this and rename it txt total paid. And we're going to Well, I'll tell you what, click on that and insert below. And we're going to just go to design, drop one more field in, which we're going to be calling balance. And this is going to equal, if you've paid a thousand, now if you've paid one thousand and the cost is fifteen hundred, the balance should be minus five hundred. So it's text total paid minus txt total, I make that, which is 891, yeah, that's correct, and format, uh, currency, okay, and pressing the control button, click on all of these, and go to border style, transparent, very nice, and there we go, so we've got our subfields in, which is kind of neat, save it, go to print preview, Okay, so we get some totaling information, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's that for the totals. Uh, one last thing I want to do, close that and close that, which is when we go here, I want to put, ah, uh, maybe, I oh know, invoice ID. I want to put a column here that says print for invoice. So let's close main, and we've got to find the query we think that is. Query... Invoices extended, yes please, go to design view, click on here, go insert column, click in the top here, builder, and let's call it print, and print, which needs to be in quotation marks, okay, just press DS here, form invoices extended DS, go to design view, go to design, add existing fields, and print isn't there. Why not? Probably because we need to save and close this. Okay, try that again. Go to design. Go to add existing field. Yep, print there. So just drop print in at the top. Go to daily sheet view. It's probably moved it all the way over there. No, it hasn't. Where's it put it? Hands up if you see print. And ah, there it is. Okay, and go to F4. Display is hyperlink always. And on click, macro builder, we're going to say open report. Report name is report invoices where equals invoice ID equals ampersand invoice ID. Okay, close that. Oh, and actually make that print preview instead of report. Save that and close that and get that data sheet view which we're already in. And we get invoice number two and print this one. And we get invoice number one. Okay. Whew. That's that ten series ten video mini series on invoicing done. Um it hasn't escaped my attention that the invoices are a nonsense because they're unbalanced, but feel free to add and remove payments to your heart's content to make them balanced um, and that's pretty much it for the invoicing so that only really leaves us one thing to do with the database which is to make that it's a continuous form that we can use as a kind of um, visual representation of the bookings in the rooms but I'll get onto that 
um, in the next few videos so just another short mini series left and we're done okay thank you for watching save all that and see you in the next video